Please flash the slide, Soro. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all the faculties and students. Plastics. On behalf of Director, Principal, B, R and D, H O D, and I T R P L E S V I T students branch, S V I T, I extend my heartiest welcome to Brigadier M P S Bajwa, Youth Seva Medal, an outstanding officer. and he has been backbone of the indian army for the kargil war brigadier mps bajwa yuddha seva medal was a graduate from defense services staff college wellington tamil nadu and msc in defense studies from tamil nadu university and he has also been alumni of uh, sainik school kapurthala and joined indian indian army in 1970 his operational experiences in, include participation in two major wars of bangladesh 1971 and kargil war 1999 he also captured tiger hill which was a, a very important and a strategically important objective during the kargil war he also participated in counter insurgency operations in nagaland punjab and jammu and kashmir he was targeted by the terrorist in an ied that is uh, improvised explosive device blast on 14th august 1998 at supor which is in north kashmir and was seriously injured after recovering from major injuries he returned to the kargil war in june 1999 he is more proud of 48 stitches on the body rather than the gallantry award which he received his post retirement activities include as a chairman of punjab energy development agency pda and also now presently he is uh, looking after the welfare of the veterans as a part of social work i now hand over to brigadier mps bajwa yuddh seva medal over to you sir is player addressing the elite audience the students of sai vidya institute of technology bangalore one say great player is very great player to address the young generation we are old generation die hard soldiers today i'll be talking to you about my operational experiences and i'll also see at what a few words that what type of wars we have fought what are the armed forces why the new generation and young students like you should join armed forces may it be army air force or navy the life is very good well not wasting any time let's go to what type of indian army we have and before i come on down to what type of wars we have fought till now i work for the armed forces there is lot of confusion i have seen the word armed forces because many people do not know they are not aware what is the difference between army air force navy all three are called armed forces well as far as army is concerned there are various branches there is a fighting branch the fighting elements which are called infantry which have the armed corps which are the tanks and the mechanized infantry we have got the sporting elements which have the artillery they fire they give us a sporting fire we have other branches like engineers which you are studying engineer students we have got signals which is also part of engineers which we we name it as a signal branch looking after the radio sets and radio equipment we also have eme electrical mechanical engineering now they look after the vehicles vehicle part 
now the defense mainly before we start the uh, i start the uh, the presentation part i i must tell you that defense is hardly anything they are all engineers mainly engineers the engineers which are allotted to us during field and engineer regiment which are called the sappers we call them they look after the bridging part the mines the roads our bro the border road organization completely is under engineers our general engineer or from the engineer looks after them similarly signals part is the radio sets and other things which are high operative which looked after by the electronic engineer and in the electrical and mechanical engineering part is looking after looked after by the eme which we call it eme sporting the and repairing our vehicles and other fleet and with kp there are services which are called asc army supply co and the ordnance we supply us the rations we supply us the clothing we supply us the ammunition part all logistics are under these services so this is the part now all gentlemen and their ladies also the well, ladies and gentlemen there are since independence we had had five wars total i'm not including the smaller ones which is of uh, calling it portuguese of liberation of goa and other places like hyderabad smaller ones the first war was 48 47 after partition was the first 48 which was fought in mainly in kashmir valley now this war and subsequently we fought the china war in 62 and then again with pakistan four wars with pakistan and one with china with pakistan we have fought 48 48 47 48 and 65 71 and 99 of course the latest one was the kargil war with pakistan but china so far we have fought only one war 62 and that was the only perhaps the only war where we have uh, faced little reverses and there was a little humiliation because of various factors whereas in all of the four wars with pakistan we were always victorious can you remember in war there is no runners up it's only the winner or the person who dies this war we not say a word war which we loses only lives war produces heroes please see it from that angle i'm addressing the new generation i'm telling i'm addressing the students i'm trying to make them understand now we come down to 47 47 65 war in 71 war because that was my first war i was very fortunate any soldier any officer soldier i means officer jc or other rank we call it soldier i am a die hard soldier any soldier who gets into army or armed forces his got aim is is main asset test is war and i was very fortunate to write in the beginning one year of service i was in 1971 war i participated in bangladesh we were sent to bangladesh our unit was there in bangladesh we infiltrated on 20th of november 71 inside that time is bengal now bangladesh and occupied a place called garipur in 71 war there the pakistani attacked us next morning on 21st november of 71 well that is called the battle of garipur very famous battle this was much before the actual war of on the western front which was actual war declared of 71 on 3rd of december mind you this was much before that's why we missed the battle honors because the war was not declared as yet we went inside well because our main aim was to liberate bangladesh we defeated them we repulsed the attack destroyed their 14 tanks became victorious went to capture jasau went to capture khulna and again i was very fortunate to be to witness a surrender of 93000 pakistani soldiers again as soldier i mean officers jcus and other ranks that was quite a humiliation for pakistan we were very fortunate to have a leaders 
commanders like late field marshal manik shah and of course my own colonel of the regiment general rora i am from punjab regiment and he was a colonel of the regiment of punjab regiment he took the surrender of general niazi a pakistani general of east pakistan well that was my first experience and i tasted the blood there i was baptized well after 71 I have been in number of various insurgencies. Not to talk of because it will be taking quite some time. I'll come down to state way to the J N K insurgency where I was wounded. Again, I won't talk in detail about the insurgency part. I will state way come to the 99 that is Kargil War, the famous war. Now, gentlemen, Kargil War was a bit different. Than the other wars of 71, 65, and the other previous wars we fought with Pakistan. Why it was different? Because it was just because of the three reasons. And the reasons were, firstly, it was fought only in one sector. Normally, you'll find the war then spills over and spills over to all over. Whole country starts, and there is a between the all the complete LC or international border is activated. Here we fought only in Kargil, so it was fought in one sector. Second thing, which which made it a little different and peculiar, this was the first war where the all the bodies, all those soldiers who were martyred, were their bodies were sent with honor, wrapped up in a tiranga in a national flag, and sent to to their respective home. And what they were cremated or buried or done anything there in their native village, in their places. Whereas up to seventy one, I fought the seventy one war also. We used to cremate the bodies. We had to cremate the bodies there only. Nobody could send the bodies back home. Well, it was whether it's World War or anywhere. This was first time. Third different thing was that this was the first war, perhaps, where the war was brought into your drawing room. Here, the reporters like Barkhadat, I think, who so, were they were reporting very boldly, and they were there present on the border, recording everything and transmitting everything on the TV. It was being seen by the people, though in their respective drawing rooms. So this makes it different. Now, what is Kargil? Anything the dark portion of the lower portion of Nalak is called Kargil side. Kargil comprises of Area of the Ras. You see, gentlemen, must understand one thing: that moment you get across Zozila Pass, that is, moment you leave the Valley Kashmir Valley. In Kashmir Valley, the tree line is up to nine thousand, and there's a complete tree line, and there's a proper LC. We are facing Pakistan eyeball to eyeball. We call it eyeball to eyeball means everywhere we are just each other. We are just seeing everyone. Okay. Whereas in Kargil, moment you cross the Jhila Pass, <clears throat> then you get down to the totally rocky terrain. There is not even a blade of grass. There is no vegetation. The totally rocky features, ranging up to seventeen thousand to nineteen thousand feet. So that makes the difference. And the Ras area where the battle was, Kargil was fought. Here the temperatures go. Down as low as minus 60 degree, the second coldest place in the world. It was the Dras. It is because of the wind chill effect. Notwithstanding, because it was likely the summer months. I'm not talking about the weather part. Weather part. I'm talking about the terrain part, which played a very vital role. Pakistan had infiltrated their regulars, regulars in the form of Northern Light Infantry. they have like we have the dark scots they have the gilgit scots they had earlier name but now they changed it to infantry northern light infantry so there are five nli six nli eight nine twelve nli they are all five units proper units with the artillery support from the pakistan side and with the smaller guns and mortars and everything they had come and occupied now question will be how did they come they can't come in the valley but in this area there are large gaps because of the terrain like 
you can't hold every you have to detect the uh, infiltration and then deal with it later here they are infiltrated at will we could have just done the same way it's like in your house somebody enters the thief enters your store room and you lock the store room you can make him die there when he is locked inside is the same thing here we could have done the same thing we could have sealed the border and let him die but then you can't see a thief inside your uh, store room we had to check them out from our own area so we had to recapture everything what they had come and occupied it was very difficult job because once they occupied they had occupied it very well but here our soldiers our army we are very proud of it we were all deployed and we were asked and we were given this task well i will not go into the history of total kargil because this is of their what main aim was to cut off our supply line on the only artery that line that the road we call it one alpha the road which joins sirnagar to leh which passes through very close to dras and they were very closely they watching and they interfering on that road it was very difficult for us to luckily for us that time the zuzila pass opened in early may on 14th of may otherwise generally if it gets raided till june depends on the slow fall we were lucky fortunate they opened up so that we could move our guns we moved our buffos we moved our guns and do uh, we built our forces later earlier it was there was only one brigade so and uh, it was very scantily occupied area and that was done by pakistan as well it wasn't by us only there was no of course intelligence failure was one of the factor that of course i am not going into the lessons drawn if somebody is interested i can give him but that was a major lesson which came out that we should be intelligence right from the top raw onwards the raw why i mentioned raw is when the equipment the equipment of snow equipment was being bought off the shelf from switzerland that time our antenna should have gone up we should have smelled something that there is something but uh, probably it was taken in that is this was for the site and a glacier and not for uh, any other activity like cargill but they were kept they were very well kept and they used the scouts those who were from gilgit area like ladakh scouts they were from that area hilly terrain area the choice of the troops were very good by pakistan but otherwise they could stay because our soldiers are much better and we are far better we proved it i'm not just saying for the part saying part 99 the task assigned to me was tiger hill tiger hill gentlemen i must say ladies and gentlemen is very strategically important feature we call it a tiger hill because it's the lie of the ground if it's, it's a tiger hill is situated at the height of 16700 feet and it's a very high feature a very its, it's shape is like tiger that's called is tiger hill feature so tiger hill was given to me now would we have a flash uh, sort of slide of tiger hill tiger hill is a feature can you all please hear me hello yes sir we can hear you uh, tell him to flash the slide sir slide of tiger hill yes sir the slide is changed sir yeah this is a, uh, yeah yeah this is a slide of tiger hill uh, can you all hear me can you all hear me yes sir we can hear you sir please go ahead sir okay okay now this is the tiger hill which you see which i captured on 4th of july 1999 so very successfully this turned the whole tire there was a experience in how i captured tiger hill sir next slide sir next slide yes sir yes sir this slide is next slide sir. yeah next now tiger hill was strategically located 
I employed 18 Canadians for Tiger Hill and eight Sikh. Yeah, this is a Tiger Hill. My plan was to capture Tiger Hill from the north, where I put uh, the Balwa, that is the Gatak platoon, we call it Commando platoon, a Gatak platoon of 18 Canadians. And if you see the helmet and where India Gate is written, this is where I, I interjected uh, eight, eight six two uh, companies, uh, one company plus of eight six. They fought very bravely, and this is where the battle was fought. I won't go into details of the battle. The only point which I want to highlight is that this capturing top was very difficult. We had to capture how we captured the top was where I recommended where our uh, grenadier Yogendra Singh Yadav, who later was given the Paravi Chakra, was the part of this commando platoon and they captured it. Suffice to say, there's a movie called Laksha, which is made entirely on this Tiger Hill operations. So you can see how Hrithik Roshan climbs and all and uh, takes it is exactly the way I made them to climb. And by the way, my role has been done by Amitabh Bachchan, which he puts on my uniform of Punjab Regiment and he's done that role. Uh, well, it was a very difficult task. Well, well, difficult task. They say, gentlemen, remember one thing. They say nothing succeeds like success. But I say, success comes to those who dare and act. It seldom goes to the timid. You have to dare and act. This was our motto in school also, we were taught. You have to dare and act. And that daring part, when I first time saw, saw the Tiger Hill, the daring part came to me with a Gurbani of Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji, which said, Deshiva Parmohe Ihe Shubh Karmante Kabhu Na Taru Na Taru Aso Jab Jai Laru Nishche Kar Apni Jeet Kar This Nishche Kar Apni Jeet Karu, that Dred Nishche, that the resolve you make it, I will do and I will do this job. It's applicable to you also in the student life. So that was my took and I followed it and the God gave me success because I dare those who success they, is given to those, those who dare and act. Well, I don't say it's all God's given, but you have to dare. On the left side, when the counterattack came, three counterattacks, Pakistani, because in the morning, on 4th of July, I captured early morning. I gave this information to the GOC and it was taken down to the uh, to the Raksha Mantri and subsequently to Brajesh Mishra, the secretary, to the Honorable Prime Minister that time, Shri Atal Vihari Bajpai Ji, who was that time at 9 o'clock in Haryana and addressing a public rally. There he announced that we have captured the Tiger Hill. Amne Tiger Hill to Kabza Kaliya. Now the battle was still going on. I told GOC not to tell anyone as yet what happens. All in the exuberance and excitement, the word passed on and went up to the Prime Minister. Well, Pakistan also learned and sure enough, whether it was Musharraf or it was their Prime Minister, no, Sharif, they all said that Tiger Hill must be taken back. This is where, gentlemen, three counterattacks were launched on the helmet side, if you see the diagram. Helmet side, three counterattacks led by a brave officer of Pakistan named Captain Karnal Sher Khan. Why he is called Karnal Sher Khan? As we name Karnal Singh, Jarnal Singh, so that you know our, our son becomes Jarnal or Karnal or Karnal. So he was from Gilgit and his parents also named him as a Colonel Sher Khan. So he was captain. So subsequently, when I read his letters and all, then I learned that he is Colonel, Captain Colonel Sher Khan. He was from 12 Northern Light Infantry. He pressed in. There was a hand-to-hand -hand fight with Air Sikh. It was almost a Saragari operation. The picture you saw in Kesari, a similar situation came up. Well, we killed him. One of our Jawan Satpal, I told him to kill that because he was putting on track suit and nobody knew that whether he's an officer, but I knew that he is an officer. I said, you must kill him first because he was motivating 
and trying to bring them again and again. Well, after you scaled, everything was okay. And we got 40 of them, they were, they lay dead. We also lost 14 of us, but the Tiger Hill was taken by us. This was a turning point in the car game. Because after this, Nawashi was told categorically by Bill Clinton that you better withdraw your troops from Kargil because this is the intrusion you have done. He was forced to withdraw his troops and this is where the ceasefire came in after I captured Tiger Head. And a 4875 was captured the same night, next night. The adjoining feature where we lost a very brave officer by the name of Captain Vikram Batra who deserved at least two Paramvir Chakras, not even one. He was such a brave officer. He was my officer for my unit and I had groomed him. Unfortunately, I could use him from the Tiger Hill, but he fought the war very bravely, two wars, 5140 when he took the, uh, that feature and when he said, asked by a reporter, what do you do, intend doing? He said, Dil Mange more or Chai America. So this is where our officers are. I mean, this is where the difference from us and our adversary Pakistan is. Because we motivate them to give their lives. You motivate, you got motivated, and you were the HR departments in your corporate houses to give work. But we motivate them to give their life. How? Oh, we don't tell them, please go and give the life. No, that's a difference. We say, just follow us. All officers lead in the army. In Indian army, this is a difference. All officers, young officers lead. They say, follow me. This is what our motivation is. This is called motivation. Motivation is to not to give life, but to follow me. And that is what our motivation is. That what makes a difference. You will find in Kargil, the maximum young officers lost their lives. We had 26 killed, whereas 21 JCU were killed. And 66 wounded, there were 60 CSUs wounded. Of course, we lost 450 other ranks. Uh, what I'm trying to say is our leadership qualities, which we have. Well, leaving aside, when this war was won, I told Isaac, I want that other bodies be buried with the respect there only at Tiger Hill itself. But this body, this officer, I didn't know that he was an officer, but Isaac is a tracksuit chap. That body, guy's body must be brought down. There are a lot of uh, people saying, why should we bring it down? Because why should we waste our manpower? I said, okay, I'll send the civilian porters, hire them, and brought his body down. When I brought his body down, I searched his pockets and all. I got his, I found his name is Kanal Shkir Khan. His wife had written letters. His father had written letters. He was from Gilgit. That's why I came to know that he's the officer. I told, I discussed with the GOC, General Officer Commanding, my GOC, as you have been. So he was the Officer Commanding, General Modi. I said, sir, I would like to send this body from Delhi and to be handed over to Pakistan. And while doing so, I asked him, I said, sir, I want to keep a little slip in his pocket that Captain Kanal Sher Khan of Pelanai has fought very bravely and he should be given his due recognition. Gentlemen, it's very difficult to recommend an enemy. I inserted that chit in his pocket that time I never knew that he is ever going to be recognized, his bravery is going to be recognized by Pakistan. Because if they refused to take his body initially, but when they took his body after five days, ultimately he was given a Nishane Hadar. Nishane Hadar, the highest award of Pakistan to be given. So in this battle, I can take this credit of saying so that as a commander, I recommended enemy for the highest award. And I recommended my own soldier, that time Grenadier Yugendra Yadav, now Subhada Major Yugendra Yadav. And both got the highest awards he got of Pakistan and Yugendra Yadav got of our country, Paramir Chakra. I think so it is a 
very good sort of a thing reward for any a very satisfying thing for any commander who commands their troops in the field and that to in kargil this is way how we won the kargil after this battle of kargil of the tiger hill this is where you see the photograph and briefing the chief and the air chief air marshal tipness and our one chief they had come to tiger hill to see how i captured it they both were actually they brought the a bottle of champagne for me and with a great sort of a joy that that was because it was a turning point in the history but how this is how the history is made this is the way this is a that is a tiger hill photograph after that now i'll take you to the another operation which i did this was at my second operation and major major operation again those not in the limelight of called zulus par operation my second operation this is where you find that our uh, this he was captain kanal sher khan whose body i returned this was this appeared in the uh, dakan a uh, the uh, newspaper and uh, this is where is written right up that how he returned the body and mind you his father wrote us to our army and he appreciated that you uh, really did a lot and an enemy doing for my son is a very creative he is a yugendra yadav whom i got uh, uh, to you know parvit chakra thomas he is subeda major now from 18 in radius now i come down to the next here you find that i am now talking to a a captured soldier a prisoner of war the only prisoner of war we had in kargil the sadra sector side his mohammad ashraf this was my operation zulus par area where 19 ff now the regulars had come after silence of some sort of a cease fire again after 13 days when we activated on 25th of july 26 mind you we celebrate our vijay divas day this was a day before on 25th of july i captured this zulus par and i captured that prisoner from there he was flown he had a gangrene on his leg he was into the he was blindfolded and he was put on the stretcher i said fly, fly him here he was thrown by helicopter to the brigade quarter to where the hospital is i went to talk to him when i asked him to remove his blindfold blinds he was surprised and taken aback to see me i went in a proper dress if you see me that i am putting on those that proper dress up a uh, brigadier and he started crying i said mohammad ashraf ki gal hui probably he understood punjabi very well you know pakistani troops they speak they from punjab they speak punjabi he said ke sab i will say i will not say punjabi many of you won't understand punjabi language he said ke main kabhi dekha nahi i have never seen a brigadier in my life and that to a, a enemy commander talking to me like this because i have never seen my own officers pakistan officers they don't talk to us they never talk to us it's very difficult to see them even so it was quite a thing because i was told the indians if they capture you they will torture you to death they want you don't drink their water if you drink their water it will be a poison this we were so brainwashed very badly but the way we treated it is in front of you that I was, i'm talking to him he was properly treated i said i'll send you back he said no sir i don't want to go back to pakistan they kill me i want to stay in india i said we can't keep you in india as per the geneva convention you have we have to return you because you are recorded well after this there was a, another incident that 19 ff co came on the radio and requested our co tal rajbir of 33 gurkhas that i would like to speak to your commander he was kal mustafa of 19 frontier force ff which they call it i said okay let him talk to me he said well sir i am i am kal mustafa ceo of 19 ff i said yes mustafa what can i do for you he said sir 
you know that there was operation and my bravo company was attacked and you have my dead bodies and probably one of my chap who was wounded is alive with you i says wounded i know we'll get him treated in case we see him well what do you want for the dead body he says sir i am an infantry soldier i would like to if you could give me my dead bodies back to me because it is my question of my is that we don't want that my body uh, of soldiers should lie there in enemy so we want to bury them with honor i said well mustafa if i return your bodies what will you do for me he said sir i will go back as one kilometer i'll see again you have to you don't have to launch any attack now i'll go back i said well mustafa how do i take your word that you will go back or not because this is decided well in delhi then also you can take my word because i am a pathan i said well i like this the way he said with confidence i said well if you are pathan i am also sardar we will return your bodies but provided it will be returned with honor you have to come take your bodies on a proper stretcher we will cover your bodies they are soldiers they were enemy we killed them we we'll killed them but now they are soldiers they are dead if the prisoner or a dead enemy comes to us we treat them very well this is the difference between india and pakistan we i said we will treat them very well don't worry we will hand you over i hand over you those bodies this is my word tomorrow you come and take but should be come properly and come that take the bodies at that time it went on with uh, those emotions and i was asked why did you promise because the bodies are generally handed over through delhi and not in the battlefield i had done before also the that you know recommending that person and doing all sort of things but mind you gentlemen here i make a point that in in an army or we as a soldier at least i am myself we don't do different things we do things differently he said things have to be done differently to win something to achieve something so this was a different thing it didn't well go well with the, some some of the people well the bodies were handed over luckily it was recorded because nine para had a video camera those days a very we didn't have the mobile phones and video cameras but he had the video camera and he recorded this i'll show you that clip which is very interesting how the bodies were handed over how they came to take the bodies done man this was done by and you can see it on the youtube when you feel like by just only saying that we the bodies handed over by us to pakistan during kargil war here is a clip sort of let's play the clip Here is our troops bringing the bodies to the battlefield where we were to hand over to the Pakistani soldiers. They were properly wrapped up in the national flag of Pakistan. With all the respect to a dead soldier, whether he is a Pakistani, whether he is enemy, here you find the Pakistani coming. Now, man, it's never happened in war the bodies are handed over. Here you find 19 FF Pakistani soldiers, their officer leading, coming, and he is saluting to my CEO, Colonel Rajbir. He is saluting him. 
Here, this is this is on the right side. You see Kal Rajbir. He is my CEO of T3 Gurkhas, and he is the officer who has come to receive the bodies from 19F of Pakistan. This is how they saluted. They lifted the bodies on the stretcher. These are Pakistani soldiers of 19F. Those who participated in the later half of the Kargil War. Here they are taking their bodies back. This has never happened. You will never find in the battlefield such a thing taking place. But it has taken place in Kargil. And that too in my brigade under my command. Now, but this was a part of the I come to an end of 99. That is Kargil operations because this was the last battle. And thereafter, the battle ended and 26, we celebrate our Vijay Devas Day. This was, bodies were handed over on 29th of July. Thereafter, I created another sector called Daha Sector on the, where Nawala Daks, I, my, I was sharing body with the uh, boundary with the, uh, with the Saichan Brigade. And I was there till the time I was posted out from there. Uh, this was a total history. What I want to elaborate on the Kargil war was that our officers, young officers, they fought so well. Everyone fought very well. You see, this is at our level, as a commander's level, senior commander's level, like your level is a dean and a professor. It's a decision making. If I gave a wrong decision, so many get, people got killed because of our wrong decision, one wrong decision of a senior commander. In your case, of course, they lose jobs, they lose something, they don't get to likewise. But here is a question of life and death. Decision making is done at our level. So decision making is very important. But execution part is more important than decision making. If we make a decision, write it right. Take a right decision and think the not executed by the blow, blow, down blow by the students or by the soldiers, then of course nothing happens. So here it was executed very boldly by the young officers, by the young officers like Manoj, Pandey, Vikram Batra, a number of number of officers, if I announce so many, there's endless less. So I think so the participation. We were not only infantry, the artillery played a very vital role because this is where the buffer guns, buffers, were fired into a direct firing role in, in, uh, in, uh, in the Tiger Hill location. It is like a firing directly. Otherwise, this gun is a firing, a giving a, a support for 30 kilometers, otherwise to the target, other than. But this, we had a the gun was very good, shoot and scoot. We could fire it directly and we just blasted off and this use of very boldly we use the artillery here. The engineers did very well in in, in Kargil war. I had given a platoon of engineers in my uh, Tiger Hill operation to the battalions which were employed. A platoon of engineers were there along with the pioneers. So that any mines which are laid down by any booby traps which are to defuse. They did a marvelous job. My brigade major was in form engineers. He is now become general of the engineers of the in army headquarters. He is now the lieutenant general. So it is the, the young officers, their dedication, their execution of the thing. So our army, this is what makes a difference that we lead. We treat the enemy with care, with passion, with sort of a thing which 
I, this is what our, what our passion is. If there's no passion in your job, what what you're doing, where you're studying or you're doing any job, there's no point of doing that job. You have to have that passion and that compassion to see that you deal with them very maturely and you deal with them very well. Both ways. You have to weigh that. Now, this was about the Kargil. Now, I, before I, because the time is running out, is hardly any about 15 20 minutes. I will now tell you the China thing. China stand off with India. That is what is happening there in China. Why China, this Ladakh thing has happened, and it will depend of the South China Sea. Now I'll come to China. China, what is the present location? Now you see the slide on the right side, the black slide. You see the light in purple is the claim line. This was our claim line much before in 1865, which was when the Xai Chin was with us and everything. And this is the red line which you see is our present LAC. Now you must understand the difference between international border LC and LAC. LOC, so and so. We keep on going. Tell me international border is where you feel the find the wire and everything. UNO comes in play and all, and you have wired the area. That is international border, which is recognized border. This is the boundary. So we put the wire right up to Jammu is international border. Thereafter, it starts the LC part. We used to call LOC now an LC. That is with Pakistan in all Kashmir Valley, it is LC <coughs> and Kargil, it is LC. Where as in, in China, it is LAC because it is not demarcated there on ground. Nothing. We, we used to claim this side, we used to claim this side. We used to patrol the area for the last 45 years, 50 years, nothing happened. The last skirmishes we had with the China was in 67 in Nathula, where uh, General Sagat and that time brigade commander, we had a little, uh, you know, there was an exchange of fire. And thereafter, the treaty was there that nobody will fire on each other. It will be amicably resolved by beating each other. That's why you find that in Galwan Valley, we just when we had that, it was nothing else but only the hand-to-hand -hand fight. Because we till now we not used a weapon. Now I come down to the you see, I'll also highlight a road. A road is a highway which has been which is cutting across. This is a highway which is uh, Bravo 219, very important highway which joins from Lhasa Tibet. To Xinjiang, Xinjiang on the Karakoram Highway on the on the north. This is the way for this highway. China had taken Aksai Chen during uh, Nehru's time, and we said it's a, just a desert, cold desert. So there's no point. You can take that part of portion and have your highway. So this is he's very sensitive to this highway. This is the only highway which brings them there. Now coming down to the areas, other points which are there. You come to Dothubek Oldie. Dothubek Oldie, where the, it's being pointed, is a is an air base. This was created a small airstrip in '62, but later on we built it up, and in uh, 2013 also there was some sort of a thing and dispute, and there was used to be only a one weather all a fine weather road, which used to take and smaller aircraft used to land there, but after post 99 cargo operations. Uh, the Raksha Mantri that time, General, uh, George Fernandez, he just gave information, he gave that infrastructure, this road should be made, all weather road. This is 250 kilometers down from uh, Darpuk to Old Dothbeg Oldie. After we made this road as a all weather road, a tarmac all weather road, and also we improved the air base of Old Beg Oldie. Uh, Oldie. This is an old air base. We, we increased and we made it capable for a higher transport aircraft to to air. Because you find the left side is a side chain complete area, and right side is our, the complete China's uh, area. So this is Dolby Gauti. Down below you see Galwan Valley. Galwan. Now this is where you find that skirmishes which took place, Galwan Valley. Importance of Galwan Valley is that this was a, this is a river which goes towards China, and we had made an eight-kilometer road along that Galwan. So they they were little allergic to that road, and they were very sensitive that why have we made the road inside? So they 
they purposely put their troops and we just asked them to remove the tents they agreed when we sent the party to see the tents they had not removed so they got hold of our people it was all pre planned by china but our soldiers fought so bravely that they gave them hell of course we lost at 20 of our brave soldiers they were they were parted including the ceo of 16 bihar but and then they also lost they don't well officially but to the tune of 45 to 50 people they lost their soldiers now they tasted first time that in case they were only very proud of their kung fu and all those martial arts but when they saw the kabaddi players and our kushti walas i think so they were taken back no it's not very difficult to fight indian soldier it's on record they say as very difficult to fight indian soldiers also gentlemen please see that there is another point where they are sensitive to because in other diagram we see the karakram pass this is other diagram you see this is a karakram pass don't be old this karakram pass is cross flight is only 20 16 km to 20 km and from there he they have made a road through pok we have written pakistan pok the road goes down this is called cpac that is called china pakistan economic corridor china pakistan economic corridor they have made they have acquired the land from pakistan in 53 they have uh, acquired the land which is marked there as area illegally uh, ceded to pa china for, by pakistan but they have bought that area they have contract and their road goes 3000 km down south to kawada that is the port with iran next to karachi so they are constructing it and that becomes their lifeline for anything for all the oil and all which is coming through is through cpac and they are making all other roads also and plus the rail also and other things also by pipeline other things they are improving so their road passes through gilgit and balistan pok where we just laid a claim after the our surgical strikes were uh, launched and our audio operations and we said we will capture this also and liberate gilgit and ba balistan moment we said this gilgit and balistan they became very apprehensive in case balistan gilgit taken our road is gone so their road this road and the road which i mentioned to you aksai chand road and the infrastructure we were creating these were the three sensitive issues which prompted china to have that and come down to the plateau mind you tibet plateau is a very high plateau it's a plateau but it is 5 km high 5000 meters high it's a flat ground but already very high so they are very scanty uh, areas air fields and all we have but they have to lug in and the aircrafts which come up and they payload they carry is quite a bit high they can't gain that much of height in plus in addition to 5000 uh, meters there was a thing i'm not saying that why china china is very strong and people start counting weapon system they have this they are this they have got so many missiles they have so many tanks up uh, much better of those now i remember one thing one thing you must remember it is not the gun it is the man behind the gun is not the weapon weapon system may be a very sophisticated weapon but if person who doesn't have the heart to use it doesn't have the guts to use it doesn't have the know how to use it it's of no use is a man behind the weapon a man with a knife can take the battle as instead of a place a person with a, a ak47 or with a, a pistol or with any weapon system is here your bravery is here so this is how you take it it is a man behind the weapon we see that china has got a one child policy it had in 73 they laid down and now those have become they are the people those are forced to join army it's not like us they are not volunteer we are volunteers they are not volunteers they are supposed to join and they are what uh, they are forced to join so they don't want to know they have become very pampered child one child is always pampered now they have uh, changed the policy to two children but nevertheless those people that one child policy are now the soldiers main soldiers those are going to fight us and mind you they are very pampered they don't 
they can't brave the complete cold and all that here so they are not very brave as they are they part to be they may be well kept they may be having all those plus points and all and additional weapon system but we our soldiers are very brave we are there to fight it out we are well versed we i don't want to go on the force level there by us because they classified nature um, so i suffice to say that we are there we can face and we can prod india or china's thing and we are prepared to take them on in any way on the china border now this was as far as china border and my dear gentlemen all the sport which is coming from whether us whether other countries and all the public opinion is with us no doubt it's only iran and pakistan which is with china the public opinion doesn't mean that us will come and uh, fight with us in the dark no their interest is in south china sea i'll come to that later now this was as of the stand off which continues we are there we have uh, we are seeing winters how the winters go and let's see how the things play out after the corona and all and this epidemic those you know that see that this pandemic uh, goes off or this started off with china now the things are going okay they have also understood we are trying to find out some solution amicably if we find out it's very it's good otherwise we are prepared now as yes, it's so china see before i come to the end of the discussion or rather the presentation this is gentlemen the ladies and gentlemen this is the so china see now you see the states taiwan you see on the right side philippines don't blow the small countries malaysia you see brunei a small country and then indonesia and then again come down to cambodia and the vietnam area so you find that china that sea so china sea is bonded by all these countries they are all anti china china's main aim is to get hold of these two islands parasel island and spratly island they have already made one uh, uh, island which is uh, their own they have developed into a base and made it aim is you see those red lines which are called the claim lines these red lines they are the claim lines claim lines means they are called the dash lines they are uh, the china's claim is that 1947 way back some dynasty old dynasty this was 47 this was the claim that china was had the complete this was their area that's of south china their main aim is threefold number one you know the adpa the economic zone is concerned 200 kilometers from the coast nautical miles is 1.85 kilometers in nautical mile so they can do anything within the economic zone they can do the fishing they can do the petroleum there is they can do mining anything they can do within the economic zone whereas now the other countries feel that they are getting hold of this uh, islands mainly to get hold of another 200 kilometers around the islands so that automatically the south china influence comes over them the ships passing through this passage of south china sea they want to lay tax and all and they want to levy the 30% and all so they want to you know it is their interest because this is the only place harbor from where they can come down to through straits of malacca down south to the bay of bengal to our andaman nicobar side that is become the neck now that is where the total concentration of all the armies whether in the naval bases whether it is us our naval forces whether it is uh, that uh, the the us naval forces because they have already tied up uh, their logistics with us in andaman nicobar recently and recent there was a uh, with a thing with indonesia as late as couple of days back and during this season of in april when this corona was on and this pandemic was there they they targeted one ship of vietnam but now taiwan last night news was that taiwan has now got his vessels and all their patrolling vessels they have got their complete vessels are there the ships they are made patrolling ships so they are coming they are, they are becoming strong all the small nations they once they still claim that taiwan is theirs but that's not uh, so anything except for north korea and iran and pakistan 
all other countries are far we have got the public opinion and south china sea becomes very important this is the flash point for any future war this is the flash point south china sea becomes very important now this is as far as south china sea is concerned is one hour i completed my presentation as a gentleman should you have any question please do come back on to my uh, whether it's a facebook or as if anything on my whatsapp or any my and thing you can ask me a number of questions that how do you want to join if you want to because this adventurous thing army is full of adventure nowadays young generation is going for trekking they're going for scuba diving they're going for parasailing they're going for everything is there army is cost free coffee of course it's a very adventurous life german just i know only two discount only two things where the new generation because of avenues coming in on the corporate world they don't they are little scared and of joining army or armed forces let me clarify two things one is fear of death one is discomfort as far as death is concerned let me show you one thing birth something has been done and they have controlled it but death gentleman is written by him the place and time is written i have survived five times to be precise twice declared that i am sitting in front of you today i am talking to you in shape one after having so many injuries wounds and so on so god is great if i have to die i have to die i, I died there in 71 itself war was too just remember one dialogue of shore jo dar gaya samjho mar gaya don't worry about that death. don't get scared about the death part as far as your discomfort is concerned let me tell you some of the corporate and multinational firms have asked very clearly and with the told the students please clear the ssb service selection board of ours is very strict clear the service selection board of army or air force or navy and we will take you in our multinational firm without any interview our interviews our selection system is so good because the iq is seen we select a person who's really got the iq qualities those qualities of like qualities and who has the qualities to make a soldier and to become an officer so please don't be scared of this profession this is a very good profession it gives you adventurous life it gives you life is full of life any query any time how you want to get into it i'll be there to help you out thank you very much jain thank you sir now i request uh, beena to moderate the question and answer session book the page book book thank you sir uh, good evening sir the first question is few of them are asking you uh, contact detail how they could contact you yeah contact details will be given to you by uh, i think so i can request big commander uh, dr sirmas rao to because i'm grateful to them i'm grateful to the dean first of all i must thank him that it was because of uh, uh, dr narayan honorable uh, dean of the institute that i am there and talking to you today and i'm thankful and grateful to uh, dr rao wing commander dr sirnivas rao k sirnivas rao for coordinating everything for today's presentation i must thank my friend sagar khan pal for slides and all preparation and for contacting and making me uh, meet with uh, dr narayan as such a personality and i am also grateful to of course our friend saurabh uh, who has been projecting you all those ppt and slides today i am grateful they will be providing you the contact number and the other things any other question please thank you so much sir for uh, your valuable time and uh, your excellent presentation which we had yeah, really i take hats off uh, for your presentation it really was such a motivational uh, presentation even i tell to my students see uh, death will happen anywhere even you can oh. die of accident in bangalore uh, oh, yeah. has a more probability than dying in the border so yeah. uh, 
so that fear they have to remove that's what yeah. i have been encouraging and really i thank you so much because i have been telling about the service selection board to my yeah. students uh, uh, i along with uh, wing commander rao and you have really uh, re rejuvenated our uh, students thank you yes. sir thank you thank you very much i think bina the contact details will be shared so anybody has a question can directly con contact sir so i think i can request nandana to nandana nandana please conclude the session please yes sir okay. yes sir uh, we have now come to the end of this webinar i would like to take this opportunity and thank one and all who have attended this webinar on behalf of the department of electronics and communication engineering savitya institute of technology and idripli svit student branch i would like to thank today's speaker brigadier mps bajwa youth seva medal for taking out valuable time of his busy schedule and delivering the webinar on leadership a live example indian army perspective and hence enlightening students like us on leadership courage bravery and confidence and inspiring us to join armed forces I wish to express my gratitude to our principal Dr Ramesh Babu for his encouragement and support. I'm very grateful to Dr Narayan IEEE advisor Dean R&D and chief mentor of this webinar for giving us the opportunity to organize this webinar. I thank Professor Y Jayasimha Dean Academics and Professor Vikram Aditin head of the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering for their valuable support. I thank wing commander Dr Shrinivas Rao for his constant guidance and support throughout this webinar. I would also like to thank Dr Venkatesh branch counselor for his constant guidance. Last but not the least I would like to thank the webinar committee for their constant contribution and support. Thank you one and all. Jai Hind. Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And very very grateful to you. Thank you so much, sir. I should be Thank so you. thankful and grateful to you. Uh, uh, hope we we'll meet one day. Oh, definitely, definitely. Anytime, anytime. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. I request all the participants you, to kindly fill the feedback form.